I'm already waiting for the 1.21 update, 1.20 has gotten boring the first day and the updates didn't really help much either and the good news for people like this who are desperately waiting for something new is that you don't have to wait a full year for 1.21 because as Corner Hard MC put it on a recent podcast And in Bedrock in particular we're shipping generally every month and that's shipping a new update to the game every month on all the different platform this bedrock's on on the same day on every platform this is always so interesting to hear from a minecraft developer because you might picture that minecraft updates once every year but it actually is more like 10 times every year because minecraft 1.20 came out in june and then in july already we've got 1.20.10 and then in august we're going to be getting 1.20.20 or roughly an update every single month obviously 1.20.20 is not going to be quite as fully featured as 1.21 but it will introduce the new player sleeping percentage rule so you can sleep with not everyone in the game wanting to do so it will bring in the new trade for cherry samplings of the wandering trader and even more interestingly it's going to bring in the recipe unlocking and crawling into the base game itself as opposed to being behind experimental toggles there are all sorts of wild changes being made in these sub updates and i think this is a better way for minecraft to work because to be totally honest i agree with this second comment which is from xxx underscore cool gamer xxx who says, I feel like because of this method of doing one update a year, uh, lots of players have had their dopamine receptors fried, which is why some of us aren't very excited about updates. And how can you be expected to wait a full year for something when everything in the internet needs to be right now all of the time? There's no enjoyment period, if anything. You need to go straight on to the next big thing. And I'll admit I'm guilty of this myself, not just in terms of feeling it about Minecraft, but also literally right now I have to go to the airport. My flight is in not very many minutes. I'm going to Quebec, the French weird speaking region of Canada. Let's go there now. Yeah. Although first, obviously, I have to stop the recording. If I don't get this done soon, I think I'm going to be quite late. So let's run. Through security now. Looking forward to do my pre-flight ritual of riding a peloton. Seriously, this is one of the weirdest airport amenities I've ever seen. But I do like it. Look at planes, get in shape. I'm officially back in the US for the first time since living here, and in the time since I've been gone, something to do with pigs and masks has happened. <laughs> what is he doing? That was a long flight, but I'm now officially in the United States of America for a transfer. And so, uh, howdy fellas, I'm just gonna be here for a little bit more of the q and I'll see you at Newark International Airport. Sorry I lied when I said I'd be answering your questions. It's 1am and I just desperately want to sleep. So I'm gonna do that now. So this is my ride for the trip, by the way. Going on a Canadian road trip. Can't say I've done that before. Very excited. It's a Tesla too. Look at this. It's gonna be a fun time. I'm driving through Notre Dame right now. It is a town so small, it exists exclusively on one street and is surrounded by corn. And there's just something charming about that. Oh look, yeah, Le Man, Notre Dame. There's the flags for the area. Got a funky French one there. From Femios, and this is an absolute Q&A Saturday classic because they ask, what did you have for breakfast? And you know, I'd love to see a little bit of an old reference. Always mention that on this channel. But uh, what did I have for breakfast today? Uh, I actually took advantage of being in the New York area, something which I don't really see anywhere else. It's called pitaya. It's a weird dragon fruit blended up in kind of like a smoothie. Uh, it's meant to be very healthy. There are all sorts of great benefits. And so I covered it in Nutella and chocolate drizzle and absolutely delicious. 10 out of 10 would recommend again. As, you know, with, with some fruit on there, it's arguably still healthy and uh, yeah I really liked it but this next comment was a really interesting one because it was on my real estate video and for that seed for that video just because I wanted to use a random seed I used the exact number of subscribers I had and so this person references that if any one of us weren't subscribed the seed would have been different and I really love what ifs like that because it's absolutely true by the way thank you for having me subscribed for so long that's what the little batch means uh, you have been subscribed for a while and thankfully because of you the seed was a pretty good one uh, I, I really like the idea of like every now and then like checking the subscriber count as a seed and seeing if we find a really good one, but maybe that's just me being self-focused. Anyway, I've got to get out of this boat and head over to a mountain. So I'm driving deep in the heart of Quebec right now, and I just want to know if anyone knows, what is the meaning behind this blue line on the ground? It is only on this side of the road, and I, I think it might be a new lane marking, like trying to do something fun, but you can see that the white line still exists there, and also the blue line wouldn't make something wide enough to be a lane on the left here. So 
Is it to indicate something that is only on this side of the road? Let, let me know in the comments if you know. But anyway, I'm going to a mountain now. I really love these things, by the way. They're little, like, almost like ski lifts, but they're for people. And it's a way to get up the mountain quickly. Yeah, you get aboard one, and then all of a sudden, okay, <laughs> up we go to the mountain. But yeah, I really love the idea of using the subscriber count as a seed for, you know, say a challenge or something like that. It's something that is pseudo-random, but also directly controlled by people, which is always fun to me because it can lead to some pretty wacky things. Anyway, speaking of pretty wacky things, um, I'm gonna meet you at the top of the mountain for the final question. So this is called a luge. It's kind of like a go-kart, but it's powered by momentum. And while we're here, I should continue to reiterate. Okay. Gotta slow down a lot. Okay, I should continue to reiterate while I'm here. This is a two-handed activity. I'm trying to do one hand, by the way. But while I'm here, I should continue to reiterate that IBX Toy Cat Dot Store shirts are so good that someone will literally steal them. And that's the you know like how often do you get your shirt stolen? Not very commonly. Uh, is this actually a good advertisement? You know they're so good that thieves want them that bad. But you don't even have to steal it. You can just go to IBX store and be amazed by the prices and the quality. By the way, speaking of prices and quality, that's something I feel like a lot of people uh, have critique about Mojang for, uh, but this comment makes a really good point that actually yearly probably is a good balance for updates, and I think I really agree with that, and I would agree with it more. If it weren't for the fact that I was going down a hill. Several days later. Okay, I'm back and now I'm camping, actually, wow, in the wilderness. I'm in the forest and I love camping. It's this thing where you pay a bunch of money to someone uh, so that you can take away all the comforts in your life and you deliberately punish yourself for like days at a time so that when you go back home, you realize how not terrible it is there. I love camping, I don't know if you can tell. And on the same vibe as camping, this next comment is interesting because they ask if Mojang is going to revert the bad parity changes that they've been making recently. And I do feel like there is a bit of a problem with the bad parity changes because Mojang just sees them as, yeah, we're doing parity. We're making Minecraft more alike and uh, they're not even necessarily seeing the casualties. That is, to me, the big issue here. Some people always assume that uh, when people do things that they make mistakes, they know they're doing something terrible and they just think they'll get away with it because that's how you might do bad things in your life. But in big companies, it's hard to get away with just doing bad things. Most people actually think they're doing the right thing. When people made that parity change, they're like, yeah, someone who's playing Bedrock for the first time will understand how campfires work or how boats work or how any of these things work. They're making these tiny changes alongside these big and much more useful changes, uh, you know, like the boat recipe or whatever else. But I think ultimately, uh, once you get stuck in that, once you make a big change, why would you make effort to undo it? It's going to be a real uphill battle to convince Mojang to undo a parity change. And so the only way to actually convince a company that is very dead set, you know, it is their North Star, it is their guiding vision that Minecraft be the same, is to say that it should be the same on both Java and Bedrock, but that the horse should fit on a boat for either. Why is that not the case? This is something I do want to discuss in extreme detail this week, but um, I, parity is something that we need to convince Mojang is a good thing for both platforms. It can't just be good for one or the other. We have to make sure it's good for both, and that's something that I think is important. Anyway, I've got one last question today, and this one's interesting because uh, this person says that the solution to my thumbnail issue might just be AI. And I, you know, you're saying AI is a solution to things is very much the 2023 way of dealing with it. Man, it sure is lonely camping out here, huh? Um, but uh, <laughs> that's the very much 2023 solution to basically any issue. And uh, I've, I've shown the jokes about how bad ChatGBT is at uh, giving you Minecraft advice. However, something interesting is AI is always getting better at the tasks that you give it. It is, you know, it's still at the point where humans build AI. AI doesn't build AI. But the interesting thing is, is when it comes to thumbnails and builds, something called MC Imagine is being started right now, which looks like this. As you can see, he gave it a big prompt about what he wants to build. And then Minecraft, uh, and then his has given him a various little thing here. This is, to be fair, we've only ever seen like previews of this. No one else has played around with it. It could be a fun little joke, like he's writing the description afterwards. But if this is real, and I have good reasons to believe it is, because if you consider how image AI works, it's not that far off, you'll be able to build something in Minecraft just by giving this thing a prompt. Or at the very least, you give this a prompt and it will make you a new thing to build from scratch, which sounds incredible, right? But yeah, AI is getting so fast, so fast, and it's going to be able to make Minecraft build soon, which is just incredible.
incredible. Speaking of just incredible, I really appreciate those of you who stuck around this video. I hope you've enjoyed the impromptu uh, travel vlog to Canada as part of it. And uh, yeah, I, I, I hope that you have had your question answered. If you haven't, leave it in the comments down below. Leave a question mark at the end, and I'll be able to get round to it for next Q&A Saturday. Also, wow, do you want a shirt that isn't just boring and green? I can't wear this at home because of my green screen, so I have to wear it out in the woods. Do you want a much more interesting shirt? They're available at ibxtoycat.store, and it'll allow you to support all sorts of uh, needless extravagances like this park bench and is that a snail or a rock? I'm gonna gonna poke it and I'm gonna find out. Um, it is a rock, thank god. But um, yeah, I, what? Why is it so squidgy? I don't understand nature sometimes. Anyway, but um, yeah, if you want to support my extravagant indulgences, you can go to ibxtoycat.store or consider becoming a channel member. Thank you for watching. I will be back the videos in a few days, uh, I assume. And until then, hopefully you see stuff uh, that is uh, good enough for you. Anyway, thank you very much for watching Q&A Wednesday at this point, and I'll see you in the next one, okay? Flashback. And anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Q&A Saturday. I'm calling an episode to make it sound fancy. If you did enjoy, don't forget to like, favor, and subscribe, because those are things that are good. And uh, yeah, I'm going to enjoy my week in Quebec. I've got some videos, hopefully pre-prepared, that you'll see over the next week. And I'll come back things fresh, and hopefully even able to do some more caveman stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. But I'll see you there. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.